I don't want to risk any uh, kind of uh, trouble here with the loose pieces. So pawn to b5 was his solution. And uh, this is a kind of, uh, kind of admission that he just wants to equalize with black, but I think a very good practical decision. He forced white to trade off a set of pieces. Now the very calm rook to f8. Black actually has chances to be better here with the bishop pair. Uh, if Fabiano doesn't take on f6, which he had to, and uh, after b3, d4, a lot of pawns, and so we'll keep our eye on it just in case you and June makes a makes a mistake. <laughs> I don't think it'll happen, um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna dial into these two because the women's world champion uh, is moments away from maintaining her lead and taking it into the final day. And the other world champion, meanwhile, up a pawn, Ding Liren. Looks like he's uh, really, really upped his game for this Armageddon. No time to overthink. He's just trusting his instincts and. Karu gambling now. There's some pressure along the seventh rank, but can the Black Knight jump in and grab a second pawn? Wow. Well, like be greedy, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like free stuff. And Dingaran says the same. I'm gonna grab the pawn and let's see what you've got. Yeah, rook to b7 is Hikaru's try, but this is tough for Hikaru. He just gave a grimace to the side. I didn't even catch which Hikaru Nakamura facial expression it was, but it wasn't a happy one. And this would be this would be a pretty big turn of events, a, a game in classical where Hikaru was pushing as hard as he could, but maybe doesn't even get a win in Armageddon, which would extend Magnus Carlsen's lead by a half a point heading into the final round. So I don't want to count that out just yet. By the way, Ding Li Ren's king is potentially in grave danger should there get coordination on the seventh rank. Moves like rook b7, uh, and Hikaru is nasty in these moments, right? Time scrambles, beware of Hikaru Nakamura, but... Um, but yeah, looking great for Ding on the chessboard. Yeah, two points up. Luckily for Ding as well, rook b7, impossible right now because the white queen would be trapped after rook to a8. So uh, right now, Hikaru is shaking his head. That's why I think he's realized that uh, his counterplay not quite quick enough. He leans forward. This could be huge. Magnus Carlsen cheering on Ding Liren from afar right now. Uh, for the tournament standings, look at that beautiful pawn center from Ding. Everything's connected and Hikaru in retreat mode. He needs a miracle. He does need a miracle. Uh, the time advantage is still in Hikaru's favor, but everything else is so much more so in Ding Liren's that the advantage, the evaluation bar, is going further and further in Black's favor. It's a decisive advantage by now. The computer is saying minus six even, but obviously it still needs to be played out. That thing has to play very fast because there is no increment until move forward. And even then, it's only one second. And he might get connect four, by the way. Connect four for the score and always wins. If Dingley Ren plays D3, go for it. Connect four. But rook to B7, create some tricks. You have to be super careful here. Don't think Hikaru is not looking for tactics. Beautiful, beautiful move there though from Ding Liren. Just controlling the seventh rank, safety first. Really good and practical decision. And uh, yeah, Hikaru just frustrated in his attempts. He's only attacking with a rook, that's not enough. Black's pawns will soon march forward. And on the other board, Fabiana Caruana against Prague. Still relatively early days, but uh, Fabi creating some threats. Speaking of not enough, Humpy Canero did go down.
has to be a win and Fabi is spending a bit more time here to invest in figuring out how is it a win. Bishop h6 check the king goes to f6. What a brave move by Prague and I think it's the right move from a practical perspective right in this situation. You just say come get me big fella and remember that you're not afraid of perpetual check because a draw you win. So that's exactly the right practical thing to do, not to try to hide the king and hope you don't get mated on the dark shores exactly like David's highlighting. Just run it out in the middle of the board. You are going to create winning chances along the way toward reminding white that, hey, if you just check me forever, I win. This is Armageddon. So I like this idea. And even this is helpful. You can take a5, and you're not afraid of danger with the king in the center because a draw, you win. So I really love the way Prague handled that critical check on h6. Yeah, and it feels like for Fabiano, things are getting somewhat harder to convert after these last couple of moves. Of course, his position is still a, a winning position, but he has to spend longer to figure it out. His time advantage has evaporated, and now there's, like, I mean, yeah, there's a, like a checkmate he could blunder only one for instance. I don't think he will, but just saying that things have gotten a lot more complex for his conversion, and he has to win. Couldn't agree more, and there was checkmate on the board. Thank you, David, for the highlight. There's checkmate on the board that does not happen, but uh, Prague in a much better spot, even though Fabi's not blundering mates, David. Yeah, but that was an important check. If White had, for example, pushed the h-ball forward, that would have been a check. Another check, the queens would have come off the board. A queen trade, unlike earlier, would now actually favor Black, who would likely draw with pawns on the same side of the board. Uh, but first, Prague, with such an open king, needs to be careful. Black Queen, the Black Knight, they were both a bit loose, no checks anymore. I love this last move by Fabiano. It's really forced Prague to think, and what's this? The bar slides all the oh. way up. Wait, did he just... What, what is the idea? Wow. Can you take c5, then queen d1? Is that a winning queen upon ending? It's uh, drawn king of queen upon a game, but this is the key move. There's oh, no wow. checks. Oh, and Prague has realized that he blundered. Oh, no. Just when he... Had come out Not only the is note. there no checks, but you can't save the knight, because if you move the knight to the wrong square, the queen checks on e4, and then the bishop checks on dark squares, and you win the queen. It's a, it's a discovery oh. on the fourth rank at the moment. Uh, this one is over. Prague, oh, that slip. It was so difficult to hold, though, with a king out in the open like this. I don't know what Fabi's thinking about. Check and take the knight. But the Maybe he's just double-checking, but he's got Wait. only a minute and 15 seconds to double-check. He plays it. Yeah, yeah, but you have to yeah, you have to move the king to where it's checked because you can't go to f6 because bishop c3. So sorry. Uh, anyway, Fabiano does ultimately give the check. He sees it. He wins in Armageddon over Pragananda. Uh, helpful if you're Magnus Carlsen, who's happy to see anybody who was chasing him, like Hikaru Nakamura and Prague, go down. Uh, and I guess a good victory for Fabi to continue to kind of fight his way back and have a respectable finish here toward the end of Norway. Well, we're going to have so much to unpack in these last Armageddon games. Uh, Karan versus Pragnananda, Hikaru against Ding. So much has happened and the games have been extremely exciting. Yeah. All right, let, let's, let's analyze the final.